Okay. Chris DiRubio says, what is your credence that octonians, which I understand are an eight-dimensional analog to complex numbers, will give us deep insights into the fundamental laws of particle physics? And there were a couple of other octonian questions this month, so I'm just grouping them all together in, you know, in that particular question. So the very short answer is I have no idea. What follows is probably highly, highly uncertain. I'm not an octonian expert. You know, I know the basic idea of, ah, uh, maybe I don't even know the basic idea, division algebras, associative division algebras. I forget exactly what the technical math term is for these generalizations of the complex numbers. You have the real numbers, you have the complex numbers, you have the quaternions invented by William Rowan Hamilton, and then you have the octonians. So one dimensional, two dimensional, four dimensional and eight dimensional, and that's it in this particular classification of things. And of course, complex numbers and real numbers for that matter have been all over physics. Very, very, very important for physics. A valuable approach to assessments of unfamiliar topics is sorting truth from fiction, civic online reasoning developed by MIT and Stanford. In it, you will learn to work like a professional fact checker. The results of these professionals have been assessed relative to undergraduates, graduates, and university professors. Professional fact checkers results take a small fraction of research time and are far more reliable. These techniques are easy to learn, widely applicable, and well worth your time. MIT's online extension course is available for free to develop this skill. I have a conflict of interest disclaimer. I did have a minor role in a recent update. Quaternions haven't had a lot of success in physics. What? What about this guy? The man who changed everything? And there it is. The speed of light. It was an amazing discovery. After 50 years of the closest scientific scrutiny elsewhere, James Clark Maxwell saw the light and found its speed in the forces of electricity and magnetism. And he did it with quaternions. You know, there's a relationship there, but most working physicists wouldn't know a quaternion if it bit them in the nose. And octonians have had almost no uh, success in physics. When I speak to experts in both traditional formulations and the quaternion octonian uh, methods, they're very clear that if you understand the tools for the alternative, it's much more effective, more simple and some problems become what they describe as trivial. You know, there's a long tradition in physics of people falling in love with mathematical constructions and operations and trying to shoehorn them into physics. If this were the strongest support for using quaternions or octonions, then it would be proper for us to dismiss the approach. But it almost never happens that just because the thing is pretty or um, compelling in some ways, in some mystical ways that mathematical constructions can be, that it will somehow probably find usefulness in the fundamental laws of physics. Agree 100 percent. If, if you have a more specific reason why this particular thing would find use, then that's great. Yes, there are some very good reasons to prefer quaternions and octonions, but these get into a little bit of complexity, so they'll have to wait for the follow-up video. And uh, understanding them is an excellent reason to invest in researching the strongest support for opposing positions. Uh, weak justifications tell us nothing about the reliability of a proposition.